إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وأحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة all praises due to Allah, we praise Him, we seek His aid and we ask for His forgiveness. We seek refuge in Allah from the evils of ourselves and the evil consequences of our actions. Whomsoever Allah guides, none can lead astray, and whomsoever Allah leaves to go astray, none can guide. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship but Allah alone. And I bear witness, I bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam is his servant and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. Ja'a an Abi Hurairat radiyallahu anhu qal qala rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam man min ummati ya'malu bi khamsi khisal yata'allamu hunna aw yu'allimun aw yu'allimu hunna ahadan min al-nas قال قلت أنا يا رسول الله قال فأخذ بيدي فعدهن فيها فقال اتق المحارم تكن أعبد الناس وارض بما قسم الله لك تكن أغنى الناس وأكرم جارك تكن مؤمنا وأحب للناس ما تحب لنفسك تكن مسلما ولا تكثر الضحك فإن كثرة الضحك تميت القلب رواه الإمام أحمد في المسند وصححه الألباني أبو هريرة رضي الله عنه says the Allah's Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم said five traits anyone among my ummah takes them any person in this ummah takes them and acts upon them or teaches them to someone else who would act upon them. Abu Hurairah anhu said, I will do that, O Messenger of Allah. The Messenger وسلم, took the hand of Abu Hurairah and he counted them on the fingers of Abu Hurairah. Five things. He said, Avoid prohibitions. You will be the most among humans in terms of worship. You will be the best among humans in terms of worship. You will become the top worshipper just by avoiding the things that are haram. And be pleased with what Allah wrote for you, what Allah provided for you. You will be the richest of people, the wealthiest. And be good and dutiful to your neighbor, you will be a believer. And love for others, for people, what you love for yourself, and you would be a Muslim. And do not go to excess in laughter. Indeed, excessive laughing kills the heart. Beautiful advice from the Prophet ﷺ and a profound lesson in all of these five things. 
Because the Prophet ﷺ here is teaching the essence of everything. Because we humans have a proclivity, a negative tendency towards numbers. We think we become the richest when we accumulate more money, when we get more money, when we have more possessions. So it's in monetary acquisitions and it's in numbers. And that's not only limited to this dunya. But even in terms of worship, sometimes we abuse worship. We think worship is about the number of rak'ahs that we perform, or the number of pages of the Qur'an that we recite, or the number of the adhkar that we make. We think it's in quantity. And we want to be believers, and sometimes we take the hard way in order to achieve that. Or we start coming up with ways that are not true, as to how to have more faith or to be true believers. We make our own theories about this. Or we want to be a good Muslim and sometimes we lose the way. The Prophet ﷺ teaches us. Belief, if you are a believer, it reflects on your social behavior, how you treat your neighbor. If you don't treat your neighbor well, you can't be talking about faith. You can't be talking about belief. And that shows that Iman is a very dynamic concept. It's not a theory in our heads. It's not some kind of specific actions that we do then we claim to ourselves belief. It's a very dynamic, it's, 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 a, it's a lively concept and it reflects on how we treat our neighbors. But that's not the only criteria, that's just an example. And in terms of Islam being a Muslim, someone who has submitted their will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that reflects on your attitude towards the people. How, what is in your heart? Is it love for people? Is it concern for their well-being? If so, then you have truly submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, these are not the usual parameters that we have. These are not the usual parameters. We usually have something else. And the problem with other parameters is that they are easy to fake. Because the hypocrites, at the time of the Prophet ﷺ, some of them would pray the jama'ah in the first line. And seemingly, they would perform all of the acts expected of a Muslim. Sometimes they came across more devout than, than true Muslims. So people can actually fool others with the wrong criteria. So the Prophet ﷺ is drawing our attention to the, real, to the real thing in matters of the deen and matters of the dunya. Sometimes, you know, we practice, so-called practicing Muslims, we think because we look like a Muslim or because we practice some of the outward clear manifestations of Islam, we think we are sure and we act as if we are better than others who might actually be closer to Allah than us. There might be Falling short in the outward aspects of Islam or in, in things that are considered to be recommended in Islam. Yet their hearts are better than ours. Their love of Allah is more profound than ours. Their devotion is stronger than ours. And that's a problem with external manifestations. They can be easily hijacked by our nafs, by our ego, so that we start bragging about them. Anything that is self-serving, it beats the whole concept of faith, of worship and devotion. So the Prophet ﷺ is drawing our attention to the real criteria. And the real criteria is true goodness. Islam is not different from true goodness. That's what Islam really is. Don't make it very technical. Islam is not a club or a cult or some kind of external manifestations that whoever displays them more is more devout. That's not how Islam works. That's a very silly reduction of Islam that is profound. So the Prophet ﷺ is saying, you want to be a worshipper? Then don't start counting numbers but resist the temptation within you to commit that which is evil.
to commit sins, to violate the rights of Allah. And this is something that is between you and Allah. Because a lot of the sins are actually personal and hidden and no one knows about them. The majority of sins that humans commit are sins of the heart. Only Allah knows about that. So it's not about how many numbers you achieve or about the quantity that you do because humans are naturally motivated towards numbers because they can make an impression with them. It's easier to give a good impression with these things. So we are naturally drawn to that. And it doesn't necessarily separate those who are truly devout from the ones who are just trying to win some kind of social currency. And people in order to get a sense of, of wealth or financial security, they, they pursue numbers. They pursue the socially accepted parameters of buying your own house, having a brand new car, wearing the best of clothes, hanging around with the best guys who are making a lot of money, with the entrepreneurs, with the business people, with the successful ones. All of these external parameters. Yet the Prophet ﷺ says that if you are content with what Allah gave you, that means you appreciate what Allah gave you. Because when you are always greedy, you don't value, you don't appreciate the richness that Allah already gave you, the wealth of blessings that Allah has already given you. Every human being is rich. Every human being has been given a wealth of blessings that if they open their eyes to and they appreciate, they would live a very happy life, a very content life. But greed blinds us to our inherent wealth and abundance. So the Prophet is saying that if you pay attention to what Allah has already given you, and you are content with that, and content is not that you force yourself into contentment, but you just wake up to the reality that you've been given enough. You've been given what you need. At least for, for now. Don't think about tomorrow. Allah will take care of tomorrow. Tomorrow has its own providence. When you wake up to the fact that Allah has already made you rich, then you will be the richest person in the world because many people have billions and still they feel it's not enough. They are poor inside in their hearts. And be good to your neighbor. You will be a believer. أحسن إلى جارك تكون أعبدا تكون تكون مؤمنة. Because faith is not some kind of information you store in your head, or some book that you memorize, or some slogans that you post on social media, or you cliches that you use in in conversations that make you look righteous or a believer. That's not what it is. Faith translates on how you treat others. And the Prophet ﷺ specifically mentioned a neighbor because a neighbor usually puts you to the test. A neighbor is someone that you have more frequent friction with. You are likely to see their deficiencies. And they are likely to challenge you because all of the negative things about the noise they make, the annoyance they create, and even the fact that you share with them a space, physical space, brings about some kind of commitment towards them. So just by being good to them, by being uh, dutiful to your parents, or dutiful to your neighbors, that's actually a sign that you have faith in your heart. Because faith is in the heart and is on the tongue and in our actions. So it's not about you feeling good about yourself or feeling happy with what you have done for the sake of Allah or how much you've memorized. And then the Prophet ﷺ says, and the fact that you wish for others, you love for others, what you love for yourself, that selflessness, that connection, to other humans, appreciating their humanness is a sign that your heart has submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Outward submission sometimes, and for some people it comes about easy. 
But this one is tough. This one is tough because shaitan feeds into our ego, into our nafs that makes us separate from others. That places us in a, in a position of competition against others. We see everyone as a rival, everyone as a competition, everyone as a threat, everyone as an enemy, unless they serve me as a person. That's selfishness, that's self-centeredness that ruins us. Yet the Prophet is saying the reality of Islam, the reality of your submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes clear. A clear gauge of that is that how much good you love for others. Just as, and if it gets to the point where you love for them what you love for yourself, then you have reached a good level of submission to Allah. And that gives us a, some sort of a different appreciation of Islam. It makes us see the, the, the beauty the humanness of this beautiful religion. And that's the natural way of being. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahabihi ajma'in wa ba'du. Then the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, and do not increase or go to excess in terms of laughter. And this is not about smiling, because the Prophet ﷺ was a very smiley person. And he advised people to have a smile, to smile to others. And he said, it's a sadaqa, it's an act of goodness. Yet, so the Prophet ﷺ would smile, and, but he would rarely, the Prophet ﷺ would rarely laugh. And somebody might wonder, does Islam, doesn't, doesn't Islam, like, as if it's, it seems as if Islam doesn't want us to have joy. But there's a difference between joy and between excessive laughter. Excessive laughter is usually a forced act. It's a response to some negativity. This is why it comes about forced. It's an expression of some bottled emotions. It's excessive joy. An excessive joy does not come within us from the right place. And it cannot be for the good reasons. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ did not say do not laugh. Because there are moments where this excessive joy takes you over, takes you by surprise. It comes, it's spontaneous, it's natural, that's fine. But when you always seek in moments of, ex of extreme laughter, this shows that you have so much pain and you're trying to cover it up. And usually that comes from your, the negative sense of self, from the ego. It's more of a compensation. You're making up for negativity. It doesn't come from the right place. Whereas joy, balanced joy, when it comes from the heart, it's beautiful. It's, it's deep it, and, and doesn't necessarily make a lot of noise outside and a lot of expression. And this is something that is noticed in Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, So that you do not fall in extreme negativity because of what you lost. And that you also do not reach extreme joy and happiness because of what you gained. Allah does not want us to be captives to our condition, our external conditions. That extreme conditions make us extremely sad, take us really down. And extremely positive conditions take us excessively into a high. No, we should have some detachment from our external circumstances. We attend to them, but we're not completely governed by them. And this gives us balance. So our lows are, our lows are not too low. And our highs are not too high. And that's what's called composure. Balance. Emotional balance. Because if you're someone who reaches excessive joy easily with any kind of external conditions, that you are someone who's hit hard by negative conditions and you will be destroyed. You're just very sensitive and dependent on external circumstances. We're talking about emotional health, mental well-being. It's definitely connected to faith. Definitely connected to our relationship to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here we see it in the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So if you, look at, if you look at those, it's about being the most or the best among the worshippers, being the richest, being the highest in faith, 
and being the most submissive to Allah and being the most balanced emotionally. By these five things, you can become the best in the world. Very simple. That's the profoundness of the words of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It's divine wisdom given to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And these are words to live by. And they just give us a glimpse into the profoundness and the beauty of Islam and the practical manifestations of this wonderful way of life. And this is something that we should hold on to before we open our mouths and preach about Islam. Because it's very easy to preach. Because there is social gains with that. There is a tension that comes with that. So a Muslim should be very careful when it comes to external manifestations. Because everyone is motivated to do that, by the way. Because they, they, they get you credit with people. But the most challenging is that you do the things that only Allah knows about. Only Allah knows about and you get no credit in this life for. That's the real challenge and that shows that if our hearts are in the right place or not. And that's what Allah loves the most. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us appreciate the essence and the value of our faith and to be living uh, human, or hu to be living examples of this beautiful religion and of this divine guidance. Allahumma ghfir al-mu'minina wal-mu'minat wal-muslimin wal-muslimat al-ahya' min humul amwat. Allahumma ghfir lana dunubana wa israfana fi amrina wa thabit aqdamana mansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin. Allahumma ghfir lana wa liwalidina wa liman lahum haqqun alayna bi rahmatika ya arham al-rahimin. اللهم كن للمستضعفين من المؤمنين في كل مكان اللهم اجبر كسرهم ارحم ضعفهم اللهم عجل لهم بتأييدك ونصرك برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون اذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم وصل اللهم وسلم وبارك على عبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين